Good morning. Good morning. Nice and loud. Um, uh, thank you to Burton Everest, who is our guest pastor today. I'm going to read this directly from what my sister told me to write, to read, so I don't get in trouble. Um, he is filling in while Sid and Jenny move Grant to college in Houston, Texas. Jenny is crying buckets of tears as we speak. That isn't for you to say, just an, oh, sorry. Uh, next Sunday, we will have backpack blessing Sunday as we prepare for the new school year. Following that service, we'll have a potluck brunch and games outside. And uh, we're ready to worship. Thank you. Good morning, it's good to be with you again. I think about uh, maybe six years ago now, I uh, was serving you as the uh, supply preacher most of the summer. So I was familiar with this, looking forward to it. And uh, I see some of you might be able to turn this into a drive-in theater by staying in your cars, which might be wise today. Um, I, uh, I wonder how many of you were here when this building was built? And how many of you therefore remember the older, older church? There's one or two over here. Where, where was that building? Is the building still there? Yeah. It's the one that's now the insurance company? It's an apartment house. Well, I was, I was baptized in what is now an apartment house on South Federal. At that time, it was a Wesleyan Methodist church. So if you drive out of the uh, parking lot from um, the uh, hamburger place from McDonald's, you see an apartment building, that's where I was baptized. <laughs> so a lot of these have uh, become apartment buildings. And the baptism still takes. It's good to be with you. I see that you've uh, put in some, some traps here. Uh, you must have a mole or something that's been visiting you. So be careful if you're walking around, around here. So it is good to be with you. Well, let's begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. We are free to love as God loves. Amen. Thank you.
this day in God's presence, we come to grow, to be renewed, to be refreshed. We come to hear the sweet word of the Lord, but sometimes the words are not so easy to hear. The good news of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting, yet some days are not as easy as others. We come to worship the Lord who loves us through all of life, no matter what. Let us come before our Savior today, singing with ears and hearts open. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, Judge Eternal, you love justice and hate oppression, and you call us to share your zeal for truth. Give us courage to take our stand with all victims of bloodshed and greed, and following your servants and prophets, to look to the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first Lord is from the book of Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in the secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long, how long will the hearts of prophets ever turn back, those who prophesy lies and who prophesy deceit of their own heart? They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What is straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land, but when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they'd been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenching, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging, even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better, so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy, the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the twelfth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. 
I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say it's going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be a scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. mercy, peace from God, from our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We read at the conclusion of the gospel, this is the gospel of the Lord, but in some ways it, it doesn't really feel much like good news, does it? Jesus says, I came to bring fire to the earth, and now I wish it were already kindled. Do you think I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. You know what Jesus is agonizingly sharing here with his disciples? We need to step back to the beginning of this chapter. At the beginning of the chapter, it declared that there were crowds by the thousands gathering, so many that they trampled over one another. But then Jesus turns to his disciples, and perhaps they were concerned 
and excited by his popularity, counseling them to be aware of their vulnerability and assuring them God has not forgotten them. And while he's doing this, someone in the crowd shouts out, tell, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. And Jesus says, that's not my task. So then Jesus returns to his disciples and urging them to trust and to strive for God's kingdom. They too are to treasure the kingdom, to have their heart in it. He tells them to be alert and he points to Peter that the disciples are called to greater responsibility. And then he groans in agony. I came to bring fire to the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. This is not what he wants to see happen, but it is a part of what it is when God enters our world for when God enters our world, we are judged, for we cannot match what God has to offer. We heard about that in the very first lesson. I'm not a God afar off. There's no secret place from which you can hide. When God comes, things happen, and things that happen are not always to our preference. Dividing father against son, mother against daughter, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. This is a reality that he sees happening, and it did happen in Christ's time. For when one became a disciple of Jesus, most often the family would perform a burial for him, for he was as dead to them, or she was gone forever from them. It was that intense, that difficult, that powerful. But Jesus wants to tell us that we are called to be alert to the life that is coming. He turns and says to the crowds, you know the weathers and you know what to look for. Well, if you're good meteorologists, why can't you see what's happening in the present time? For in the present time, Jesus was calling people to a new life. There are many in Israel who claimed the mercy and grace of God, but there are also those who rejected Christ and rejected his disciples, not something which he desired, but something that came about because of the reality of the truth that he won. But Jesus also, Jesus also makes clear what his baptism is. For his baptism is his baptism into death and resurrection. It is this which gives him the calling that he has, and it's to new life for all people. It's to life and mercy that would heal those divisions, would heal those divisions as those who are divided focus not upon their own desires, but upon Christ. There are divisions in this world, are there not? And they seem to be deepening and increasing, not only Russia and Ukraine, but with our own nation, hard divisions. As we prayed, it's not easy, but we are called to this life of Jesus Christ's life. For we are baptized into his baptism <laughs> when here or what's now an apartment building that had been St. James and which apartment building that had been Wesley, Wesleyan Methodist Church. The baptism was a baptism into Jesus Christ and into his death, into his resurrection, into new life. And as we remember that baptism, we are empowered 
to live the life to which God calls us. For, for we behold Christ on the cross, crying out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. This is the way Jesus' division comes and is healed on the cross, not only for us, but for others as well. This morning again, and uh, for several days in a row, the news has been uh, covering in one of its light spots a Little League event. How many of you may have seen it? Where the Little League pitcher accidentally gets the batter on his helmet on the head and it knocks him down. And it takes him time to get up. It was not easy. And so he finally is able to get up and to go to first base. And he notices that the pitcher is in deep agony, feeling so sorrowful over what he did accidentally. And he calls time out, goes over to the pitcher and hugs him and assures him of God's love, of his love, of forgiveness. <laughs> Some have said that that little leaguer's parents, or not just his parents, but other parents of little leaguers could learn a lesson uh, because sometimes little leaguer parents are not quite as forgiving. <laughs> but he is a witness of what it means to be living in the baptismal life of Christ Jesus. We like to every once in a while watch old shows of the, the Waltons. It's kind of neat that they're on cable for us. And there was one that we watched just recently, we hadn't seen it before, in which the school teacher has to leave because her sister is in an auto accident and and uh, John Boy has to fill in for a day and he says, this is not for me. <laughs> uh, I'm not a teacher. So the school board finally hears of a possibility and, and she comes, she's young, 24 years old, very stern, very prim, keeping people at a distance. And she rearranges the class the way she thinks it should be. She tells a little girl that she has to no longer sit in the front but to sit in the back and and when the little girl tries to say something she won't hear it and when dumb boy tries to help them she won't hear it and she tells John boy's brother to uh, that he has to according to the tests that she's administered go down from the sixth grade to the fifth grade and moves in there and uh, the parents become in an uproar. The children, many of them say, we're not going to go to school anymore. And she is ready to pack up and to leave. She's been staying at the Walton house, of course. And John Boy goes to see her and listens to her for a while and then says, we need you to stay. And she says, well, I can't stay, I'm, I'm a fairy. He says, no, you can get up and start again. You can have a new start. And so the next day in school, she returns to class and she says to the class, let's start over from the beginning. And she tells the little girl to move back to the front of the class. And she tells John Boy's brother to go back to the sixth grade. And they begin to work again on the class together. A beautiful image of tensions being relieved by mercy and forgiveness. It is to this to which Christ has called us. It is this kingdom that we are to trust. It is there that our hearts are to be. But we tend, don't we, to be blind to our own failings. My mother used to say, Burton, when you point a finger, three hands, our three fingers are pointing back at you. And I think of that and how important that is for reconciliation. For we're called to forgive not because we are better or perfect, but because we live in God's mercy and God's grace. And it is this that empowers us to be forgiving people. It is not easy when we are angry. It is not easy when we are hurt. It is not simple. Years ago when I was um, learning to be a caravanner traveling for youth ministry, 
the uh, person who taught us said, you're going to be in a team of three. In my case, it was two girls and a guy. And uh, you're not always going to get along with each other. And you might not get along with the church that you're working with or the young people you're working with. And, and when you are upset or fearful, just stop and think. I have everything I need. I have God's love. I have everything that I need. I have God's love. It is this that can empower us to address divisions and to deal with issues and to bring them into the open rather than hiding. It is this that can enable us to speak out to one another, but not with arrogance, but with compassion, with forgiveness as people who are forgiven. It is this gift that we are given. It is this that enables us to heal. Jesus agonized over what was going to happen, but he did not say, we are to help it happen. He rather said, we are called to bring healing as he was on the cross himself. This is God's mercy for us. When we look up and we see this time, we see that God is still at work in this time. We see God's mercy and God's love. We remember we have everything we need so remembering that we live in this time in God's mercy and being merciful. As the Beatitude said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will inherit the earth. That is our gift. The peace that Jesus finally brings is the peace of the cross, the healing, life-giving, steadfast peace of God in Jesus Christ. May we live in this peace. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding, the peace of God which passes all understanding, the peace of God which passes all understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds and lives trusting serving, caring in Christ Jesus. Amen. So we lift high the cross.
proclaim the Apostles' Creed, we are reminded that we have all our need for God, creator of heaven and earth, continues to restore us, to refresh the earth with green grass. We confess our faith and trust that Jesus Christ has died for us and is risen from the dead to assure us of God's steadfast love. And we confess that we believe in the Holy Spirit who works among us, for it is among us that God's peace and mercy and forgiveness comes. That's why we will shortly share the peace. So we confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We greet one another with the words of peace. such a wonderfully decent group. to the ministry here at St. James may be given in several ways. You may give an offering with your time. There are many opportunities for you to serve both here at church and out in our community. And I think I saw that most uh, amazingly uh, when the right ride came through here. Monetary donations can be given in the box at the back of the worship area. You can mail offerings to the church office or drop them by. And you can sign up for online giving at stjamesmc.org, where you can sign up for recurring offerings or a one-time donation. And we are delighted in continued support of the ministry. We continue with the offertory prayer. We give in grateful thanksgiving for all that God has given us. In the upside down world of the gospel, we measure our wealth not by what we have, but what we can give away. Let us give away generously in this offering to bless your church, your people, your creation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Confident in God's compassionate rule and enduring love, let us lift up the needs of the church, the world, and all of creation. Almighty Father, send the fire of your word to cleanse and refine your church and shine the light of the gospel to all the ends of the earth. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, bring your cooling and refreshing breath into the world's parched places. Protect the very young and the old, the earth's fragile habitats, and all that is vulnerable to the heat. Keep safe all those in paths of destructive wind or water, and heal those afflicted by poor living conditions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Righteous God, all the nations belong to you. Give justice to the weak and the orphan and rescue the needy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for this community, celebrating with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep. In our joy and in our tears, be near us. We especially lift up today all those who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit, including those whom we name at this time on our lips or in our hearts. in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, lead our congregation through times of strife and division. Tend and nourish the vine of our faith that we may bear much fruit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, fulfill your promise to those who have run with perseverance the race and the last join us, join us with them at the great cloud of witnesses before your everlasting throne. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the gift of education. And we pray especially for Grant as he enrolls, looking to prepare for the ministry to which he believes he is called. We pray for all who are now going to colleges or places of study for crafts. We pray that you would be with them and sustain them and help them to know that you hold them close and empower them for their calling. Lord, in your mercy. God of mercy, hear the cries of your people and answer us according to your steadfast love through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen.